there, tech leaders. Welcome to Control-Alt-Delete with Lisa Dury Live. I'm Lisa Dury, your guide through the ever-evolving landscape of leadership in tech. We're breaking down barriers and bringing our community together in real time. So whether you're tuning in from the comfort of your office chair or catching the replay later, please know that your voice matters. Speaking of voices, that's what firm leadership is all about. Listening, inviting wisdom, and embracing the collective intelligence of our teams. Because let's face it, no one leader has all the answers, and that's where you come in. As we dive into today's discussion, please be an active participant. Drop your thoughts, questions, and insights into the comments below. This isn't just my podcast, it's ours. Together, we're rebooting Leadership Drive. And before we kick things off, I'd like to mention that this podcast and live stream experience is brought to you by RLD Group. As your host and the CEO of RLD Group, I'm grateful for the opportunity to collaborate in bringing this podcast to life. Together, we're committed to empowering organizations, teams, and leaders like you, and your engagement in this conversation is invaluable. So without further ado, let's jump into the conversation, get comfy, hit that subscribe button if you haven't already, and let's make some magic happen. Hey there, everybody. Welcome, welcome to our live stream. I'm so glad you're here on whatever platform you're on. This topic has really been resonating with folks because I've been getting messages and uh, conversations have been started about exhausted teams. So what I'd like to do is just present our topic for today, and it's rebooting exhausted teams. If you are feeling exhausted, I want to let you know you're not alone. I was um, even pulling the news up today, and I was just, I want to read you just today on burnout and, and burnout today. The news says, the, here's the topics, right? Saying no to that invitation might not be as bad as you think, study suggests. Experts call for new strategies to prevent healthcare worker burnout. Your mobile phone is making you feel burnt out and exhausted. Five ways to beat burnout. The rise of leaveism. Do you use your holidays or do your holidays wear you out? Are you suffering from relationship burnout and me mental health experts on the one thing they wish you knew about burnout? This is all just in the news today. So if you're going to spend the next 30 minutes with us, we want to make sure that you get valuable insights. You don't have to go read all those articles. You don't have to sit around and wonder. If you are feeling exhausted, you know your teams are exhausted. We're here today to help you reboot those exhausted teams and to pour into you. So I have two guests with me today I'd like to highlight for you and then we'll bring them up to have this conversation because at RLD Group, we believe the wisdom is in the organization and that all voices contribute to the collective um, innovation that needs to happen. So I can't be here alone doing this. I've brought a couple of guests here and you as our guests are also invited to participate. So please use the chat, drop your thoughts in, ask your questions, and we're going to make this interactive. So let me just tell you who's with me here today. And these are two of my favorite collaborators. You've seen them here before and they're back again for more. Uh, Rochelle Neiman. Rochelle Neiman is an exchange trained facilitator, coach, and a consultant committed to cultivating environments and cultures that support and enhance the well-being of individuals, groups, teams, and organizations. You may recognize her from many of our workshops. She's with us all the time. Rochelle, I'm so glad you're here today. Thanks for being here. Yay. So Rochelle's here. here. There she goes. Yep. Yeah, awesome. Thanks, Rochelle. Okay. And then Alenka Schneidersek is also here with us and she's a passionate advocate for transforming the way engineers think and operate within tech organizations and society. With her PhD in electrical engineering, she offers a uniquely relevant perspective to organizational learning and development for technology leaders and engineers assisting organizations to cultivate high-performing talent to enhance business agility and competitive advantage. Alenka, welcome to the show. Here she Thank is. You for, Thank you for inviting me here. Oh my gosh, I'm so glad you're here. So hey, let's jump right in. I'm going to monitor the chat and I'll bring questions to you real time. But when you think about exhausted teams, uh, what is it? Im what's important um, to just bring forward right now to the audience? Like what's one question that's on your mind or a question that leaders should be thinking about as we frame our conversation today? Alenka, what shows up for you? One question is first, if you are a leader or if you are an employee, what well being means for you? Mm. What does well being mean for you? Yeah. And how would you like to feel 
in the organization at work because we know that the work becomes a really big part of our life. I appreciate this question. So I'm going to jump in with you for a second here because one of the things that I've been noticing, and this question is so relevant and timely, there were two different times the last week where I was coaching clients. Uh, one was in a consulting engagement and one was a one-on-one -on -one coaching. And both times the people I was working with on the call were visibly sick. Like they were sneezing, their eyes were watering, you know, they were having to go on mute because they were coughing. And in both of those conversations, I brought forward, you know, how are you feeling? Um, you know, are is this meeting really necessary right now? How might you resource yourself to feel better knowing what else is on your plate? And I could tell by the way they were asking um, me back, like, why do you ask? Do I, you know, what do you think? And just the conversation alone was people are working sick all the time. So the question of how, what does well-being mean to you and well-being at work? I think that's a wonderful question to start the conversation because if you're working when you're sick and there's no downtime to rest and reset, frame the call. Um, what is it that you think is important to presence as we jump into giving people actionable insights about how to reboot their exhausted teams. What's on your head and heart? I'm sorry, you cut out for just a second. So was that directed toward me? Oh, that was for you, Rochelle. Yeah, what's okay. on your head and heart to presence um, in this? Yeah, and hey, welcome to tech <laughs> right. and just working through it all, right? Yeah. Yeah, I would say um, be mindful and look at the structure of your days. And if there's no time for downtime in your day, then it's really hard to pause and check in with yourself to just notice how you're feeling. I'm a person who operates at a normally anxious energy. And if I don't take the time to pause and reset myself, I will operate at that frequency um, without even noticing it. And it's really not good for my well-being. And so I would say, look at the structure of your day-to-day -day and how can you create just a little bit more space in your calendar, like block off that time to give yourself to either do the deep work um, that you need to get done or just checking in with yourself to see how you're feeling in the moment and do something to resource yourself and really create that time and make it sacred and don't let other people schedule over it. Mm, yeah. You know, I, so much times when I'm working with clients, we talk about agency and choice. And I think what you're talking about is actually prioritizing that moment, those moments and blocking that time to the best of your ability and holding yourself accountable to yourself. Right. Because, well, there's not enough time. It's back to back. And I'm guilty of this too. I mean, I have definitely not prioritized my time. It's such a great reminder about what we have to control right now in this moment, right? Because there is more choice than I think we realize when we're in this stuckness of exhaustion and overwhelm. Um, great. Well, so thank you. So let me just talk to you a little bit more about thinking about this from an organizational perspective, Alenka. You know, so we're talking about what the individual can do. And yet we know organizations and culture create exhausted teams too. And if we don't bring this forward, we're not doing a service to anyone when we think about, you know, this lens that we talk about regularly, which is I, we, and us. So the individual leader, the team, and the organization. Let's go from individual all the way up to the, the us organizational wise. What are some things that leaders should be looking at and thinking about, you know, what are the tough truths that they need to be focusing on when you think about these exhausted teams? What comes to mind, Alinka? Thank you for focusing on the organizational uh, topic because this is so important. And I'm seeing on the market that the leadership is really aware they have to do something. They have to take actions uh, to really help uh, work uh, force to feel better. However, I'm seeing that many times they are not taking enough time. They don't ask themselves, what are the really root causes that are the reasons that the people are exhausted. So many times they start with the symptoms and what they are seeing, they are seeing burnout. So what they are doing is jumping in and inviting people to have a workshop about the, how the people that they can manage stress, 
However, this is only one part of the story. And I'm hearing the questions all the time. Why this approach will not give me the results? The long-term solutions always needs leadership perspective and big system perspective. And what are the free guide, guidelines that I, I always talk to the people? Take time, explore what's really going on. Use your data about the processes, about the work, the productivity. Communication is one of the key questions. The second thing is that addressing both, one on, on one side, people self-leadership. So helping individuals to really understand what well-being means for them and what they can do to advocate and communicate that to the leaders. However, on the other side, it's organizational dynamic in culture, uh, which brings uh, to the light processes in place or practices in place, the culture, the values. So working with both sides on the long-term solution, a strategy that you have to put in place. And the third thing is really to think about the outcomes and measurable indicators that you want to have in mind where you're doing this. And it's not, I would say, uh, run on a short term or short distance, it's long distance run when you really have this goal in mind, but then you are doing intentionally activities that you bring the whole organization where you want to be. So meaning uh, putting people first uh, and also inviting culture to change with values um, that really the people would see and work every day. So also feeling well at work. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you know, you're making me think about something that I often, in the consulting engagements that we work on, and many times Alinka and I do these together, when you look at even just the MBOs or the quarterly objectives or the priorities, right? Sometimes the team's exhausted because the, it's unrealistic what you guys are all agreeing to, right? I'm guilty of this too. Let's have 17 things we're going to accomplish this week when maybe only focusing on the top three could actually move the needle and create the space for the organization to thrive too. And I would like to um, bring that back to the person, right? So, Rochelle, what are your thoughts on that when we talk organizationally, the ways in which Alinka is presencing, and then also as the leaders, how might they be contributing unknowingly to this ex exhausted system? And what might they think about right now um, to give themselves the chance and the permission to not look at this just as a burnout problem, but literally a priority, a boundary, or a process? Like, what comes to mind for you, Rochelle? Yeah, I think it's really important for the leaders to model the behaviors for their teams. And so if a leader is exhausted themselves and taking on too many tasks, they're probably that's propagating likely to their team. And so I think it's really important for leaders to check in with themselves to see what's possible during their day. Are they overloaded? Are they in back to back meetings? Are they doing anything to resource themselves? Are they skipping lunch? Are they doing all the things that cause us to become depleted throughout the day? And then check in with themselves first and then have those open conversations with your team on how do you feel about your workload? Uh, where could you use support? and notice um, behaviors, the repetitive behaviors that you and your team have going on, if you can become mindful of those, and then give yourselves the chance to pause and notice and just check in with how they're doing and feeling. Um, all of you collectively, it could be part of a team meeting where you all talk about your workload and um, how you can support each other best. And also look for the like habitual language um, that's being used. Uh, I know I'm guilty of it, especially when I overschedule myself. Like I get into that braggy type behavior of like, oh, I'm overworked. I'm sacrificing myself because of my work. And if that is prevalent in your organization and it, it is um, our culture thrives on it. So it is very prevalent everywhere, I would say, and it can become habitual. So just being mindful of those repetitive behaviors. And if you notice that people are talking about how much they're sacrificing themselves or giving up to get their work done, that might be an indicator that something needs to change. Mm. Lisa, 
Yeah, I'm just curious right now, Alenka, if anyone has a comment on that. Has anyone suffered from the busyness and the bragging of like, I'm so busy, right? It's such a wonderful reminder, Rochelle. And it, it's just prevalent, right? And I just appreciate you presencing that. Alenka, yes, please. I would like to invite you to the conversation because your opinion also, uh, it's very relevant and valuable. I know that you are talking about the firm leadership a lot. So I'm curious mm -hmm. how can firm leadership model um, advocate well-being in the organization or how can brings and helps organization to thrive? Mm. I thank you, Lenka. Yeah, you know, I talk about this a lot and I think one of the things I should do is define it because I talk about upgrading your firmware, right? But firm stands for flexible, intuitive, resilient, and mindful. And all the examples we've shared today are examples of that, you know, being flexible with what the priorities are, being mindful of how you're spending your time and what you're modeling as a leader. You know, resilience, I think we've got the, um, we all have the badge of honor for resilience. And I think sometimes we forget what is possible when we tap into resilience and we rise to the challenge when it's needed. And I often see leaders right now, because they're exhausted, they're not tapping into their intuition. They're not listening to their gut or their lived experience or even asking for help, right? And so for me, firm leadership is one of the ways in which we can help organizations, leaders, and teams really just assess where they're at and are they tapping into these core competencies as they're leading into the unknown of the future? So I appreciate the question, Alenka. Thank you. And thank you for bringing light to the skills and competencies that the leaders can develop. And FIRM is the right way to think about competencies and skills that you can use when you're talking about the well-being. And I'm curious um, how FIRM leadership can support also organizational design. Yeah, well, you know, you, we're having fun with this one, aren't we, Alenka and Rochelle? So from an organizational design standpoint, what we're about to launch into and offer are what we're calling firm leadership labs, because what we know is that organizations that um, are based in strengths and you understand what people are bringing to the table and the leaders that have been engineers and promoted into technical leadership um, if we can give you the firmware and show you this path that your your culture can transform too. Um, we actually are offering a firm leadership lab that's coming up with Alinka, Rochelle, and I, and we're going to take this conversation deeper. Um, Rochelle, anything you want to add on the firm leadership lab and organizational design through the lens and how we're designing this experience? Yeah, I'm actually really excited for these experiences. And our first one is coming up um, just this month, Friday, March 22nd. Um, but we're going to be inviting people to bring world, real world situations where they can take it from theoretical conversations and kind of these ideas into practical applications and solutions. And so we're designing it to be applicable to everyone at the individual level and then looking at it, how they can bring it into their organizations and teams. So I'm excited for the practical application of the firm leadership model. Mm, thanks. Yeah. And it's free. You know what I love about this so much is that a link had to answer your question. We're co-creating this with the system, right? With the clients, with the community. And so while we, we have a framework, I think it's going to be informed more by these leadership labs together. Like what is working for you? What isn't? We're going to look at this through the lens of I, we, us, and create the space for people to actually invest in themselves to bring this forward too. Um, Alinka, what are your thoughts? I, I'm happy to hear how we are co-creating. And I know for all of us that how important is also the voices from the audience. That's why whoever is here, I would like to invite you with the questions and topics. What are based on your opinion, what you are seeing in your organization, in your life? It's really important that we address in those uh, firm leadership uh, labs when we are talking about the burnout and teams exhaustions. Mm, yeah. And it's interesting because this is our first time together live streaming and inviting the audience in. Right. And so one of the things we decided was that we're going to walk the talk and we're not just going to say, listen to your teams and bring the voices in and tell you, we have to model that. So the more that we can bring your voices in through the chat, the more we can bring your voices in through these leadership labs, we believe that that's going to unlock the magic because the magic is in the connection. 
And if there's anything I know about when you're exhausted, the last thing you want to do is connect, right? You just want to like go to sleep and hope it all gets better tomorrow. What I do know is one of the antidotes to exhaustion is connection. And so that's why we're, we're doing the podcast this way now. That's why we're running these leadership labs. And it's really what's happening in our client base too. So I'm just going to pause for a second. And I want to just take a look at our notes here because I want to make sure that we're giving all the practical things we can right now. Um, let me just go here for a second. So when you think about things um, through the lens, Rochelle, that you're coming at it, which I just always, every time you speak, I go, oh, this is so good. So if you think about with everything we've talked about today, what's one thing that leaders can do in their meetings, right? To create a more lasting impression when it comes to well-being. And the reason I'm asking about meetings is for those of you that have worked with us before, you know that Rochelle many times will walk us through a breathing exercise or a guided imagery exercise about imagining the future. And there's just something about when Rochelle brings these tools in, we watch our clients just exhale for a moment. So is there something that comes to mind, Rochelle, that any leader can do that they don't have to be trained in, but will actually help resource that exhausted team to just take three deep breaths and be okay? What comes to mind? Yeah, I would say um, beginning your meeting with um, just some deep breathing or a, a chance to pause and just become present to the moment can really help people actually become present and kind of invite everybody to let go of what has led up to this point in the day and really bring their focus on the meeting at hand. And I, I know I like to try to multitask and I think we all get in the habit of doing it during our meetings, but it actually drains our energy when we're trying to multitask and it pulls um, some focus away from what we're doing in the present moment. So taking five minutes, even two minutes to just take a second to be silent, even if everybody wants to do a self guided deep breathing practice or guide people through six deep breaths. It's um, really simple to do. Just have to keep count of six breaths and invite people to inhale and exhale a little bit more deeply than they normally would. And then invite them to let go of anything else um, that they feel like they might need to get done at that moment and just be really present in that um, team meeting together. I have I love this. I actually wonder, do you want to just do the six deep breaths so we can model it real quick, Rochelle? I mean, I'm putting you on the spot, but you're so good at it. And this replay will be out there so everyone can just hit this play right here if Rochelle walks you through six deep breaths. So you get Yeah, it? absolutely. Okay, let's do it. Okay. Well, I'll invite you to settle in, get maybe 5% more comfortable, whatever is accessible for you. And go ahead on your next inhale, just take a nice deep breath in and let out an equally long exhale. And if it's comfortable, you can close your eyes or soften your gaze, but you don't have to. And take another nice deep breath in and another nice deep breath out. And another nice deep breath in and out. And on your next inhale, maybe inviting uh, some release of tension if you're noticing that in your body. And on your exhale, just letting that go. And another nice deep breath in. And on your exhale, again, letting something go. And we'll do one more together for a good measure. So a nice deep breath in, really inviting yourself to this present moment and letting anything go that you don't need right now on your next exhale. And then just notice how you feel after that, you know, probably less than 30 seconds.
Thank you, Rochelle. Yeah, that whole experience from when I said it to you to when we did it was a two minutes max. I was mm-hmm. timing it so I could let leaders know that, you know, that alone, just giving that moment. And even if you just say, hey, everyone, let's give you two minutes to reflect on what matters most today in this meeting. You know, like the simplest things. And the Rochelle's always so useful for um, jumping in. Thank you for just being right there with us with the breathing. And if you felt good, drop it in the chat. Let us know because we know it moves needles. Um, and with that, we do have a comment here. I'm seeing leaders struggling with how to give their teams well-being support while also meeting the needs of the business. Yes, I think this is exactly what people are feeling right now. Um, I'm going to take a moment to process my thoughts to be um, useful on this because I could go on for 17 minutes. Um, Rochelle or Alinka, anything come to mind while I just give myself a moment to have one or two sentences to respond? I think that this question is very relevant and very true for the leaders. And one thing that really stands out for me most is communication and trust. And how to advocate your well-being to your leadership. The first thing for sure is understanding what are the organization desire and goals and vision. On the other hand, is learning what really matters for you and how to communicate that in the light of understanding also the organizational needs. So I think it's working from both sides, but learning how to understand yourself, self-awareness, communication, and also trust are three big uh, skills and competencies, how you can bring those two together. Mm. I'm noticing after every time you guys talk, I make a note, a sound like, mm, ah, so for those of you listening, that's me verbally presencing my appreciation for the comment. Um, Alenka, this is so useful. And I think one of the things I've burnt out as the, as a leader, this is why I wanted to capture my thoughts. Okay. So when I burnt out, I ended up taking a three month medical leave and I felt broken and embarrassed. I was worried if I'd keep my job. I felt like I was letting my team down. Um, and the reality was I was letting myself down and my family down because I wasn't taking care of myself. I was just working. And so I just want to say to the leader who's struggling with, you know, supporting well-being and also the needs of the business. The balance is um, if you don't support the well-being, you end up with the medical leave like me or worse. If you do support the well-being, you run the risk of like, well, am I too easy on them, right? So it comes back to, I think, for me, if I were to talk to my younger self, it would be to be curious about where I was giving my time and my power away. And also, how might I advocate and support my team with priorities? So instead of having the 12 things that are due, having a conversation with the team about what is going to have the highest return of our investment of time and energy. And I just want to say, come to the Firm Leadership Lab. We'll explore this with you more, right? I, but there's some that's some tangible things on my mind and in my heart right now. Um, and I really appreciate you posting that. I don't know your name. It just says LinkedIn user. But this question is critical, and I think it's a wonderful way to put the um, the end mark here on our time together today. If there's any other comments or thoughts on that, please let's keep the conversation alive. And Rochelle, Alinka, and I are going to go comment through all the social platforms to support that as well. And I think what I'd love to do is just in one sentence or less, uh, Rochelle and Alinka, your final thoughts, as then I talk about what's up, what we're going to be doing next. Rochelle, what, what would you like to say to close out today and feel complete? I think um, from my perspective that the business needs have been uh, prioritized over the needs of the people and the well-being of the people for a long time. And it's going to take some time for us to find that balance of um, where the happy medium is in the two. So we're in the process of discovery right now. So if we're feeling that conflict, I think that is um, a, a normal thing to feel and also keep advocating for well-being of people to be uh, in balance with the needs of the business, because I think that will be an important thing to move us into a better, more well-balanced future. Thank you, Rochelle. Thanks for being here today and being in the conversation. Alenka, how about you? Final thought? 
final thought is just to be curious. Be curious about yourself and also how you can bring your voice in the organization. Um, I agree the culture needs to change. And I'm always um, advocating because the people are the ones that innovate and brings new technology to the communities, to the people. And the people are always seeing the last, not the first in the organization, or often, I would say. Mm -hmm. That's changing. And I hope it will really change for better, for society, for better use of technology, also for better of people, relationship and connections. Thank you, Alenka. Yeah, curiosity. I think curiosity is definitely needed here and bringing the voices in. So thank you, Alenka and Rochelle, for bringing your voice in today. We're going to keep doing this, everyone. Your voice matters. Your input matters. Uh, make sure to like and subscribe. Share this with your team if you like. You've got a breathing exercise in here. Um, Firm Leadership Lab, join us there too. You're welcome. We'd love to have you in that conversation. Until next time, this is Lisa saying thank you for joining Control-Alt-Delete with Lisa Dure Live. It's been a pleasure. Stay curious and stay kind. Take care. And that's a wrap, folks. Whether you're here with us live for the reboot or caught the replay to upgrade your leadership drive, I want to say a big thank you for being a part of this experience. Your input and energy are what keep us going strong. But hold on tight. This isn't where the journey ends. Let's keep the momentum going by sharing your thoughts in the comments, spreading the word on social media, or dropping me a message. I'm all ears and ready to connect. And hey, don't forget to hit that subscribe button or ring the bell so you don't miss our next episode. If today sparks something for you, your likes and comments mean the world. They help us reach more leaders like yourself and prevent burnout. Together, we're not just leaders, we're firm leaders, upgrading our drive and rebooting our leadership game one episode at a time. Oh, and one more thing. If you're interested in bringing this valuable discussion to your teams or organization, RLD Group is here to lend a hand. Reach out via LinkedIn or email hello at rldgroupllc.com. We'd love to chat. Until next time, this is Lisa Dury signing off with a virtual high five and or a virtual fist bump, whatever you choose. Make it a great day, everyone.